Hi, I'm Suzanne Pavel, and the story I'm reading is titled Chicken Pot Pies. It is mid-October 2021, during the lull be before Omicron. I'm in Belfast, Maine. I sit slouched on my chair. I watch the unfolding action. Before COVID-19, Hannah held a Friday bake sale at her storefront theater called The Playhouse. Located in the turn of the 19th century historic opera building that occupies an entire block downtown in this old main fishing town. The pandemic shutdown giving birth to a pre order business with no contact picnic pickup helped to grow this licensed home kitchen business. I offer to help. Hannah replies, Oh no, it's rude to have guests help. I sit back affably with a cup of tea at the kitchen table. Over the next few days, I observe the transformation of this modest room into Hannah's food business, which is called Molly's Kitchen. It is named after her maternal grandmother who wrapped apron strings twice around six-year-old Hannah's waist and gave her baking lessons. On Facebook, someone profiles chicken pot pies from Molly's Kitchen. When Hannah tallies up the responses to the emailed Molly's kitchen flyer, she counts 28 ordered chicken pot pies, about double the usual amount of orders. Hannah has a method that organizes her Molly, Molly's kitchen enterprise. She designs a menu on Tuesday. She distributes it by email on Wednesday. Requests have to be returned in an email Thursday evening by 6 p.m. Well, probably smoke signals in Morse code would work as long as that Thursday evening deadline is met. The ingredients are prepped starting Thursday around 8 p.m. for pickups on Saturday afternoon starting around 4 p.m. Without a doubt, Hannah pulls an all-nighter on Friday. Monday and Tuesday are recovery days. Then the process begins all over again with the posting of a new menu on Wednesday. Hannah sits down across from me at the kitchen table and consults her charts for amounts to measure out. She uses a metric scale. Her words sound muffled as she reflects upon how for every bout of food preparation, she makes copious notes, which upon review seem to lack essential information. Luckily, the previous week, Phil made the hour drive north to Bangor to buy 35 pounds of salted cabot butter. He also had the wholesale worker load a 50 pound sack of flour next to the 50 pound sack of granulated sugar into the cherry red van, which at other pre-pandemic times hauled the marionette troop around to public schools in Waldo County. Phil tells me how he relishes the drive home because Penobscot Bay comes into view when a steep hill is crested in Hamden on the su southern outskirts of Bangor. The glistening water seems to reach out into the distant curve of the earth. Between Phil and Penobscot Bay is a scarlet sea of peaking autumn colors with islands of burnished orange leaves. The view fills him with the urge to eat a candied apple. Back now to Hannah. From butter, flour, and salt is born a delicate pie pastry. Hannah employs the dough hook attached to her KitchenAid mixer. While she prepares a large, bald mound of pie dough for a Thursday overnight rest in the refrigerator, she wonders if the Facebook posting had anything to do with the survey she distributed last month with the Wednesday menu. Chicken pot pies came out hands down the number one winner. Phil and Hannah are not a romantic couple. He's been her theater assistant since 1982. Phil is hitting his 70s. He's five years younger than Hannah. He previously lived in a private home. It's attached barn remodeled into an apartment. When this house was sold, Hannah let him move into two of her upstairs rooms. One room is his art studio. The other room is for sleeping and listening to low radio tones of in-season baseball games. All Friday, Phil helps in the role of a sous chef. He peels a bushel of Yukon Golds. He chops two bunches of celery. He peels and then slices coins of carrots. 
He holds two wooden matches against his tongue to stave off tears when he chops Vidalia onions. He and Hannah silently waltz about the kitchen, sweeping up loose ends and moving into new scenarios of cookies, cakes, pies, and quiche in between the prep steps for the chicken pot pies. When needed, he grabs a broom and sweeps. There are never dishes stacked in the sink. Rather, there's a constant movement to the dish rack or the dishwasher. Hannah wears earbuds to listen to Agatha Christie Mysteries via audible books on her iPad. She works through Friday night. When Phil and I awaken, it is like a Christmas morning with chicken pot pies magically abounding and four quiches, two layer cakes, and chocolate chip, peanut butter, and oatmeal raisin cookies, a dozen each. We test the batch of biscotti by each dunking one into our morning coffee closing our eyes as we feel appreciation for Hannah's mastery of this crunchy treat. Many regular customers are older folks who have learned they can have a hot home-cooked meal for a pretty cheap price. A nine-inch chicken pot pie costs $20. Cut into quarters to warm up, it provides four hearty meals at $5 each. Whenever a car pulls up, Hannah peers through the kitchen curtain. She's glad that Phil is usually out in the yard raking. He greets the newcomers. The customers enter the barn attached to her house, which was built in 1874. Tables are set up with the goods and packages labeled with the purchasers' names. It is operated with the New England tradition of an honor system where check or cash are left in a basket. Come Monday morning, I follow Phil into the yard stand close to a nearby patch of morning glories climbing a trellis. Phil digs a two foot deep hole on the inner edge of the garden. He pours in the carrots, potato and onion skins. He tops it off with soil. He, he places an overturned large plastic garbage can on top. So far, no critters have burrowed underneath to dig up those scraps. And this composting means that the earth is doing the same thing over and over as Hannah does week after week in Molly's kitchen. Thank you.